X is a movie about old people and their old smelly parts. A true throwback to the horror classics of the 70s and 80s, like Mentally Unwell Man with Logging Equipment and Mentally Unwell Man with Axe. So if that's something that tickles your fancy, then I suggest you stick around on account of there being something for everyone here. Old people existing, old people ceasing to exist, and old people trying to create existence but being about 40 years too late. And talking about existence, let me introduce you to the existence of today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Although I'm sure it has nowhere near as much strange old people content. To celebrate Raid's 4th anniversary, I'm picking 4 Raid champions that I would like to invite to a dinner party. You know, like the dinner scene from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Fun for the whole family. First up is Bracus, because no dinner party would be complete without a good boy under the table asking for scraps. And next is Drexthvar, to perpetually keep the dishes warm. Robar, so he can tell me all about his recent skiing trip in the Alps. And Belenor, because, well, he's just the cutest. For the 4th anniversary, there's dedicated offers, free gifts, promo codes, events and a brand new fusion event where you can get your hands on an anniversary themed legendary champion. Use the promo code 4 years raid to get 4 skill tomes legendary, 4 energy refills, 400 energy and 400,000 silver. Take a trip down memory lane with a recap video of all your stats in raid. And for Amazon Prime members who just got Genbo, keep an eye out for the next drop with some powerful savage gear. It's available from March 2nd until March 30th. New players, use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack with this in-game loot. Find your in-game rewards here. The movie begins in 1979 with a nice picturesque scene of an idyllic farmhouse with bodies strewn all over the place. And after the sheriff heads down into the basement, he sees something presumably really awesome judging by his reaction. Oh God. And time turns back 24 hours, and we're introduced to Maxine, her boyfriend Wayne, Bobby Lynn and co-performer Jackson, and RJ and girlfriend Lorraine, as they're all in the back of a van driving to their destination to make a movie that your mother wouldn't approve of you watching. Don't worry. I won't say anything. After driving past a truck wreck where a cow has been given a non-consensual identical twin, they arrive at the very same farmhouse we saw before and I'm sure they'll have a great time with no problems whatsoever. After one of many Texas Chainsaw references, Wayne knocks on the front door to be greeted by the owner Howard as well as being greeted by a shotgun that's pointed directly at him. But after remembering that he's here for a place to stay, he says that it's not even loaded and just for show and Wayne says that he has a gun in his van for the exact same reason just in case you need a very heavy paperweight. And much like the Sigma male that he is, Howard takes them all to the guest house, tells them he doesn't like them, and then leaves. Based. And after being told to get screwed by Howard, they get to screwing. While Bobby Lynn and Jackson are busy reproducing, but wrong, Maxine heads down to the lake for a smoke and decides to jump in for a skinny dip while being secretly watched by Pearl, Howard's wife. After almost being lunch for this not so good aquatic boy, Maxine spots Pearl waving at her and decides to sit there in absolute silence after walking up to her and being offered a lemonade. Tastes like crap. While showing Maxine a younger picture of both her and Howard, she reminisces about the old days, like that time he killed a bunch of people in the war, and how she used to be a dancer, which apparently gives her the overwhelming and unstoppable urge to be weird. She touches Maxine without her consent, which unsurprisingly kills the whole shot a bunch of people in the war vibe. I don't think that's what Maxine had in mind when she was offered some of Grandma's cherry pie. It's Maxine's turn to shoot her scenes now, and as she does in the barn, she has an unforeseen viewer, the geriatric genital toucher. Pearl watches through the window, wondering why it smells so funny in here, before heading back to try and seduce Howard. But in all of his Sigma maleness, he denies her in favour of No Nut November, and also his heart may literally explode. Pearl is struggling with the fact that her youth is now long behind her, and along with it, any basic human connection. She yearns for the days when unarmed civilians weren't the only thing Howard was shooting. Back with the group of young aspiring filmmakers, Lorraine, who at this point has only been helping out with the production, pipes up in front of everyone, including her boyfriend RJ, and says that she would like to do a scene. To which RJ says no, and Lorraine says yes. Next thing you know, he's crying his eyes out in the shower, because apparently it's not wet enough in there, after not just being cucked by Jackson, but filming the whole thing too. Do it for the content. After re-evaluating his life choices, while everyone's asleep, he decides to take the car keys and drive away. And drive away he does, for about three seconds. He comes to a stop as Pearl is standing in the way of the exit, and with him not exactly keen on the idea of wiping old lady off the windshield, he gets out to see if she's okay. 
and apparently she takes this as another kind of invitation to get all touchy-feely and starts hugging and trying to kiss him before being done with the foreplay and going all in and burying a knife into his neck. As he falls to the floor, she gets on top of him and begins repeatedly burying the knife in him, getting him even wetter than that time he had a crywank in the shower. After quite literally decapitating a man for rejecting her, she does a little dance because nothing gets the blood flowing quite like… blood. Lorraine rolls over in bed and for some reason is awfully confused as to why her boyfriend isn't laying next to her after she literally just slept with another man in front of him while he clearly showed extreme disdain for the idea. Huh, I guess we'll never know. She finds the front door to the house wide open, but all she discovers is Wayne, standing there in his tighty whiteies. After saying to Wayne that she hopes she didn't hurt RJ's feelings and really doesn't want to break up with him, Wayne goes to check the barn for him, while Lorraine goes to speak to Howard on his porch. While walking through the barn barefoot, Wayne accidentally stands on a nailed board, as apparently Bobby Lynn, Maxine and Lorraine aren't the only ones getting nailed today. After pulling out his impromptu piercing, he notices movement outside of the barn and hobbles his way over there to put his face up against three perfectly pitchforked size holes to be given the forbidden glory hole. Pearl then waddles into the barn covered in blood, stabs him one more time because I guess she really didn't like him, before covering Wayne with hay. Howard sends Lorraine down into the basement to retrieve a flashlight for her to then find herself locked inside. After finding the light switch, she comes across someone who's just hanging out, raised off the floor with stab wounds all over his body. Like a piñata, but with guts. Jackson wakes up to the sound of the floorboards creaking, but brushes it off before swigging some milk from the fridge because I guess we're all having saliva scented cereal tomorrow. And on the milk carton is a missing persons notice that could be the same person from the basement, if you squint a little. He notices Howard walking towards the guest house and greets him by opening the door so Jackson and Big Jackson can say hello. Howard's looking for his wife who sometimes wanders off at night and has brought the shotgun because alligators are on the property. And snakes apparently. After Howard and Jackson leave, Pearl sneaks into Maxine's room and pulls the sheets off her. Not satisfied with her finger poke earlier, she takes off her clothes and crawls into bed next to her. And not what my first choice of lube would be. She begins wiping RJ and Wayne's blood all over her body. Howard and Jackson split up at the lake, and after finding a car that looks as if it's been deliberately pushed in, Jackson's lured into a swamp after thinking Howard's drowned in the water. But after getting out, Jackson's confronted by a non-wet, definitely not drowned Howard, who tells Jackson he has no idea what it's like because he can no longer satisfy his wife. Which is somehow Jackson's fault, as he suddenly raises the shotgun and pulls the trigger. Probably thought it was self-defense with Jackson walking around with that deadly weapon. Maxine rolls over in bed and is face to face with Pearl as she opens her eyes. Her scream wakes Bobby Lynn, who then opens her bedroom door to see a naked Pearl scurrying away like a small child after being caught doing something they really shouldn't be doing. Lorraine then breaks open the door to the cellar and as she reaches for the lock, Howard, disgusted that someone would dare desecrate his fine woodwork, breaks her fingers with the butt of his gun because screw those fingers in particular. Bobby Lynn heads outside to try and find everyone, but what she ends up finding is a naked Pearl standing on the dock. Sympathetic and thinking that she's having some kind of episode, which she is, a murderous one, Bobby wraps a blanket around her and tells her that everything's gonna be okay. Seconds before everything is in fact not okay as Pearl slaps her and pushes her into the lake before watching the alligator rise up from the water and bite her in the head. I don't think that's the type of head Bobby Lynn was expecting when she came out here to shoot this movie. Maxine, still unaware of what's going on, spots Pearl and Howard walking towards the house armed with a gun. As she hides, she hears them both enter the house. Howard tells Pearl that he's got one in the basement for her, but Pearl doesn't want that one, she wants Maxine. And all of this murdering has apparently got the pair worked up, as they both remove their clothes, but Howard is worried that his heart can't take it. But thinking with his other brain, he does it anyway. All the while, the pair are going at it, as Maxine hides beneath the bed, trying to not get concussed. She manages to sneak her way out of the house and finds their van but with punctured tyres. And RJ's neck, also punctured, severely. She grabs Wayne's gun from the glove box and frees Lorraine, who doesn't stop to listen to Maxine and immediately sprints out of the house to immediately be shot in the face. With Maxine hiding, the pair begin to drag Lorraine's body inside when suddenly she gurgles, causing Howard to jump and his heart to stomp. At least he got to go out doing what he loved best, doing old chicks and killing young people. With Howard dead, Maxine comes out of hiding, pointing the gun at Pearl and demands the keys for his truck. And after she gets them, with a general disliking for the elderly, she aims the gun at Pearl and pulls the trigger. But Wayne wasn't lying, it really is for show. But Howard was, and Pearl fires in her somewhat general direction with the shotgun and is sent flying out of the door with the blast. Maxine walks over to Pearl as she begs for help with a broken hip, but Maxine gets into the truck and leaves her to rot. 
That is until Pearl drags herself into the road and tells Maxine that she'll never be a star and she'll end up with nothing. To which Maxine finds particularly offensive, so puts the truck in reverse before driving over a human sized speed bump before leaving. The movie then comes to an end, with the officers from the beginning of the movie coming across RJ's camera as they're all about to watch a bunch of dead people go at it in a creepy old house. Before we bring this to an end, I'd just like to give a massive shout out to all YouTube members and patrons, the people who every month continue to support the channel, while YouTube makes it incredibly clear that it's not exactly fond of the type of content I make. As well as just being a great help, YouTube members and patrons also get access to a private Discord server, where you then get access to uncensored versions of all videos going forward. So if that's something you're interested in, perhaps consider checking it out. So starting off with this week's new YouTube members, a big thank you to OKWK, Kukorid Kovi, sorry I butchered that one, Jerry, Sam Green, Cosmo Masiro, Doruk, Patrick Hanna, Dan Jackson, Zoltan, Perez Vishu, Christian Heinrich, Henrik Jessen, Jiki, Lucia Manoz, Bearded Panda, Brandon Fox, Smite Chills, Ivan, Ethan Brown, Average Ohio Citizen, Ryan C5277, Space Cubes, Marvel X, Frogman, Jess Wolfie, Archie Patefield, Henry Hicks Burdock, and Leroy Jenkum. And heading over to Patreon for this week's signups, a massive thank you to Jordan Hayford, Gregory Gomez, Maverick Mulford, Jose Tavares, Carlos, Dick Kickman, Matt Tam, Angel Dimas, Samuel Bernard, Jake, Fluffy Boy, M. Bussing, Jamon Owens, Alex Thompson, Faris Esakir, The Lad, Adam S, Logan Garrison, Akam, Jack Moore, Jaden Steed, Yolo McPat, Coco Cocky, Raptor Tim, Jonathan Belker, Elijah Salem, Saffron Murray, Beristar, Michael Leach, Nehemiah Jones, Griffin Healy, Donta Foster, Parker McQuillan, Bree McCormack, Trevor Matheny, Max, Sky234, Nos4A2, Cameron Chopra, Justin, GNSLR, Matthew Sir, Gemma, Kevin Chen, Gius, Jason West, Anthony Burst, Red Heart, Patrick Hughes, and Carrie Seer. So once again, a massive thank you to all YouTube members and patrons, and a big thank you to everyone else for watching.